Hi Glenn, Al and all of you will be part of the Epic and Causeway family. I wish you all a very good evening. I'm happy for this opportunity to say a few words on this launch of the joint venture between Glenn Jensen and Causeway to form EPIC. This joint venture is indeed exciting for both parties. I believe it to be a marriage made in heaven and I pray that you'll be blessed with outstanding success and longevity. First and foremost, I would like to apologize for not being with you in person on this important occasion for EPIC. I had planned to be there, but unfortunately I had to change my plan as a, as a result of some urgent business matter that requires my personal attention in Malaysia. I would like to share with you a little of my bit of my background. My name is Vincent Tan and I'm the founder and majority shareholder of the Bajaya Group of Companies in Malaysia. It is one of the largest Malaysian conglomerate with over 30,000 employees and diverse businesses in various parts of the world. I'm 61 years old or 61 years young and I left school after junior high school 44 years ago in 1969 at the age of 17. I was a fairly good student and would have made it to university if not for the financial difficulties that my family faced following the failure of my father's business. I decided to leave school to start working to help my family and to support myself. I was recruited to sell life insurance by a life insurance agency manager, but my father had other plans. He insisted that I work in a bank and through his friend, he got me a job as a bank teller. Like a good son, I obeyed, but I sold life insurance on a part-time basis. I'm glad I did, as I discovered that I could make more money selling insurance part-time than I could being a full-time bank teller. After one year, I left the bank and became a full-time insurance agent. I did very well selling life insurance and with the money I earned, I started an import and export business on a part-time basis. I imported second-hand reconditioned cars from Japan for sale in Malaysia. I was then 19 years old. In 1973, when I was 21 years old, I read an article that appeared on the front page of the Time magazine about the success of McDonald's entitled The Burger That Conquered the Country. I'm sure most of you Americans would know about this. It got me sufficiently interested to write to McDonald's and ask to be a franchisee. They, of course, uh, turned me down. After all, what can a 21 years old do for McDonald's? I persisted and lobbied McDonald's for a total of seven years before they agreed to make me their partner in Malaysia and giving me a 51% stake in McDonald's Malaysia for a total investment of US 100,000. I was then 28 years old. That was my first big break. I must tell you a little bit about this big break from McDonald's. After I wrote to them, I sent them almost every week some news report, news article, or information about the fast food business, the restaurant business, and the economy of Malaysia, and about, you know, a lot of things about Malaysia. I sent it to them for over several years, and uh, later they actually wrote to me and said, please don't send any more material. And uh, they said, when we are ready, we will definitely contact you. <laughs> So, I just want to say I was very, very persistent and it pays off. My second big break came in 1985 when I was 33 years old. I succeeded in buying from the Malaysian government a lottery company that was then not doing too well with annual sales of about US 10 million. Because it's a lottery business and Malaysia is a Muslim country, so the government don't really want to promote the, the business. So that's why the, it didn't do very well. 
So when I took over from the government, I bought from the government, if my memory serves me right, over a five-year period, I increased the annual sales by 50 times to over US 500 million from 10 million US. Today, the company's revenue exceeds US 1 billion, probably about 1.2, 1.3 billion, with profits in excess of US 100 million per annum. Believing in strength of diverse, in diversity, I then diversified my company's businesses to many different areas where I saw potential for development. Today, the group generates a combined revenue of US $7.5 billion from businesses that include consumer marketing, direct selling, financial services, real estate investment and development, hotels and resort and recreation development, gaming, lottery management, food and beverage, development of sanitary landfill, motor vehicle assembly and distribution, internet-related businesses, water utilities, media, retail, and telecommunications. I will not sure if you know that Causeway was started about 34 years ago by Al Chua. My involvement in Causeway came about 14 years later. I was on the plane to Singapore one day and I was seated next to a gentleman who talked about direct selling, his direct selling business and how he was planning to start his business in Indonesia. He got me sufficiently interested in the business that when I landed, I immediately called one of my directors to look into this area of business. He later came back to me with information on several direct sales companies that we could buy into. And one of them was Causeway. I then arranged to meet Al, and as they say, the rest is history. Causeway has since grown to be one of the largest direct sales companies in Malaysia. I attribute the Causeway success in Malaysia and success around the world is a result of Al's vision and Al's hard work and dedication to Causeway. And I also like to say that I personally attribute whatever success I have achieved in part to hard work, perseverance, persistence, self-discipline, and largely to the grace of God. My mother is a very devout Buddhist. She imbued in me and my siblings the values of humility, gratitude, charity, and devotion to God. My charitable works are very much the result of the way our mother raised us. It was on my mother's advice that I joined the Giving Pledge, an initiative by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, whereby I pledged to donate half of my wealth to charity during my lifetime. In business, I have been guided by the words of many great men. I would like to share with you a few quotes that I have kept close to my heart. Sir Winston Churchill said, A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, and an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. He further said, If you are going through hell, keep going. And I would like to add, Sooner or later, you will reach heaven. Napoleon Hill, the great American author of Think and Grow Rich, said, Patient, Persistence and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. I remember reading Napoleon Hill's book when I was selling insurance. Every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. My favorite is from Ted Roosevelt, the legendary American president, and he said this, Far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumph, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in the great twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. In closing, I would like to wish all of you and the epic Causeway Joint Venture a successful future. I believe the joint venture will achieve outstanding success given the combined experience and successes of both 
Plan Jensen and Al Chua in the business of direct selling. I would like to share with you this story of the king and the court jester. You know, this king is very upset that the court jester is so smart that he can answer every question and the king said to himself, I'm going to do something and I'm sure this time he'll be caught. He won't, give, he won't be able to have the correct answer. So to test the wisdom of the court jester, the king asked the court jester what he, the king, was holding in his hand. Noticing some feathers sticking out from his hand, the court jester correctly said it was a bird that the king had in his hand. The king then asked if the bird was dead or alive. The court jester knew the king had him there as the king could squeeze the bird to death if he said it was alive and let the bird fly if he said it was dead. In his wisdom, the court jester replied, Your Majesty, the bird is in your hand. Whether it is dead or alive, it is up to you. And I want to say to all of you, Epic is as much in your hand as it is in Glens and Els. Whether it succeed or not, it is very much up to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, El, Glenn and everyone, thank you very much.